Hello Capricorn. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitsha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you are connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. Some of you may be in a relationship. This could have been in the past. It could be current. Others of you, this could be a situationship. For a small portion of you, this could also be someone who you have a very intense connection with. Chemistry. A lot of sexual chemistry. And... No one's really speaking up. For those of you that are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self. And I do that to get the answers that we need. I don't channel through any spirit guides. I never have. I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. Okay. This deck, many of you know, I interpret quite differently than what was originally written in the book that it comes along with. Here I see four cards that indicate a lot of darkness in the sense where either you feel this dark energy or they do, your person of interest. Now, typically I am looking for what it is that your person of interest is feeling and thinking, but because of the intensity of these cards, you could also be feeling this as well. The first card's the strongest. We have here inspiration, followed by illness, wellness, sexuality, mothering, boundaries, order, compassion, wild woman, and creativity under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Capricorn, Having you in my life is like a breath of fresh air. You are a breeze that comes and goes, splashes on my face. This freshness, this feeling of being so alive, so vibrant, so youthful. These feelings only come true when I think of you and when I'm with you. I feel strangely inspired by you. The talents that I've had, hidden emotions and feelings that I've had, I didn't know. They've started to surface. The world now seems to be better for me. It sounds better. It looks better tastes better, smells better. It's not as dark and dreary as it once was. It appears that the connection that I have with you, you have this ability of inspiring me. Me now wanting to be someone different, a better version of myself, and to explore certain parts of me that I didn't know existed. There's a lot of things I haven't told you. And sometimes there is a sense of despair, desperation, sorrow. I don't really tell you what it is that's weighing me down, the burdens that I carry 
emotionally. There are certain things that do weigh me down, that prevent me from being with you the way that you would like me to. These restrictions, burdens, constraints, responsibilities, obstacles, this trauma that weighs me down, it doesn't really allow me to be with you, even though I want to. And there's a part of me that wants to be intimate with you and even have a family with you. Because I see you are so nurturing, caring, and protecting. You have this sense of unconditional love, which is so sweet. I wish I could be a part of that. I also feel that in this connection, it's hard for me not to think about you in this sensual way. You are so alluring, so sexy, so gorgeous. Every part of you, everything about you, it's hard not to think of you this way. I do feel that in this connection I have found someone, and that is you, who is so different than the rest. There is love that exists. It is strong. It is true. It's powerful. But there are certain things that are holding me back. And because of the things that weigh me down and don't allow me to be with you the way that I would like to, sometimes I think it's probably best just to keep my distance. If I feel it's not going anywhere, why move forward anyway? I have put up boundaries. But one of the reasons why I've put up these boundaries is because in my mind, there is now a lack of direction and understanding and clarity. In order for me to move forward, I really do need a better understanding of where we stand, where we are headed. Right now, I'm at a crossroads. I can go forwards, backwards, left or right. But I do not go. I do not make a move. Because all around me I'm surrounded by clouds, by thick fog. And because of this I'm unable to see the right path, the right choice, the right decision. I am blinded by this fog. Once this lifts, whenever it does, that will be the day when I step out of this stagnant position and I will make a choice. I'll make my decision. Right now, I do feel a lot of compassion for you. The things that I have put you through, even intimately the way I've been with you, certain things that I've done to you that I've wanted to do, Certain things that have happened that may have made you feel a little uncomfortable, out of your comfort zone. I understand that you may feel as if I've taken you for granted. As if I've overindulged, used you, misused you. Now I have empathy, sympathy. I understand that what I have done no, it has not been right. I can't change that now. But I can put myself into your shoes and see what things were like before.
there's a part of me that has been very sneaky, and I thought I could get away with things. Clearly, I could not. Karma catches up. Right now, there's a part of me that knows that in this connection, there is truth and there is falsehood. I have not been so truthful to you. I have told you pieces of information, yet I have taken out a few things here and there which you don't know won't hurt you. Or will it? I now feel, and I now know, that in this connection, I have hurt you. There has been a sense of suspicion, deceit, deception, a lack of truth, a lack of faith, and sneaky behavior. How are you supposed to trust me? There is no way. And that's why I'm confused. And that's also why I put up boundaries. It's easier for me to put up boundaries because I don't have to face it. Overall, I do want to create something with you. Something that'll be long-lasting for the world to see. A web of love I would like to weave and make you the center of my world. But this web may be very fragile. It needs to be much stronger. For now, yes, I am inspired by you, the magnificent you. But I also know that even though there is desire, there are wants, and there are needs, I am unable to fulfill that because of other things that are in my life, things that I have truly not shared with you. So, Capricorn, a lot is going on here for a very, very tiny portion of you. Somebody here may have gotten someone pregnant and now they have backed away. They're not really taking that responsibility. Um, if that's the case, do what you need to do in order to make yourself happy, in order to get, obviously, support if you are pregnant. Um, here we do have a situation where somebody was very highly sexual, and here we have the mothering card, right? So right after sexuality, mothering, how do you become a mother? Huh. Okay, so we have a situation here with these two cards. They're literally right next to each other. One of the issues here is we're dealing with an individual who almost has player-like tendencies. And you, Capricorn, you really believed them. You really truthfully believed them with your heart. But... They turned out to be a little more sneaky than you expected. And yes, they do feel sorry for you. They have compassion for you. But what's the use? Big deal. Okay, that's great. And what are they doing? I see that here. And it is, it is distressing. This entire connection for some of you, it might be based very much on the physical. Um, there could be a high level of physical sexual chemistry. But beyond that, I never got any other cards here that are related to love, feelings, and emotions. Maybe in the upcoming cards we could see that. Maybe that might show up. But for now, it does appear that you are dealing with somebody who got into a situation for the fun of it. Not really seeing the consequences. Not really seeing where this is headed. And that's the problem. I'm getting the word commitment. Somebody here wants to commit, the other does not. And the commitment is not just a small kind of commitment. Somebody here has invested a lot of time, energy, effort, and love. And even if somebody is pregnant or having kids or is with um, 
a bunch of kids, if they have kids, and if you two are supposed to be moving in together, for example, um, there's complications here. I'm seeing the, uh, the words problems with children. Problems with children. Okay, interesting. We have here the Prince of Arrows. I only picked the top card. That's the way I read. But for those of you that are interested here, we also have the Ten of Coins. And I read these in the reverse. So if it's upright for you, just uh, think of this deck as the reverse. Uh, Ten of Coins reversed and Contemplation, which is the Hermit card, reversed. Here we have the Prince of Arrows and Innocence. So why do I look at this deck? For me, I have a look here at the why. Why is it that your person of interest decided to just fade? Why is there a lack of closure? Why did they ghost you? Certain things that you might have noticed that in the beginning things were very regular. There was um, regular contact, communication. But then it became very irregular. And hardly anything. So sometimes, you know, people tell us that these are the reasons why. And then sometimes they don't. They don't share. They don't tell us truly what's on their mind, what's bothering them. So here I look into that. Hopefully this will provide you with a little bit more clarity on your situation. And like I mentioned before, these cards I read in the reverse. The Prince of Arrows. Interesting. It talks about decisiveness, clarity, and determination. Now, if you guys remember, I just had the card, Order, which I call Order and Chaos. This card right here. This card, I had mentioned a lack of understanding, a lack of clarity, even direction. Which way to go? right? So it appears this is in the past. So it appears that what was happening in the past is still unfortunately happening right now. The first set of cards are what's happening currently. So it does appear that this person's mindset really hasn't changed much. They're not really being decisive. They're not really gaining the clarity that's needed. And they're not very determined. Here it talks about not understanding as much as one would like to. Feeling unable to stand up for oneself, inarticulate. Here, we're dealing with somebody who has kind of given up. Because they don't understand, they just kind of gave up. And that attitude won't get you anywhere in life. Um, they needed to have an invested interest. And because they gave up so easily, that does mean that at least in the past, there was that lack of love. Because if they really loved you, they would have tried to do at least something. I'm not saying that this person doesn't love you. They may have feelings and emotions. They may have affection for you. But because they're not with you right now, it's most likely because they have other issues, other problems that are holding them back. For them, there's a lack of clarity. They don't have the knowledge that they need. There's something about you, about the situation that they have lack of clarity on. And that's something that's holding them back, actually. All right. We have here innocence. Innocence here talks about ignoring their better instincts, cynicism and pessimism, distrust of the self or distrust of others, a lack of optimism, a lack of trust, a lack of innocence. Before, this person felt that they were protected by divine forces and they were able to face their fears, but then things changed. They didn't want to do that anymore. Uncertainty. Uncertainty is the key word right now for these two cards combined. Your person of interest was very, very uncertain about this connection about where they were headed, about their role in this connection. They were uncertain. And when someone is uncertain, they don't really know what path they're taking, right? What decision are they going to make? What choice are they going to make? They don't know that because that's not what their mindset is. So your person of interest here was very uncertain. 
were they very lustful? Yeah, they were. Do they have a lot of passion? Yeah, they do. A lot of sexual chemistry, a lot of sensual chemistry. We have all that. But when it comes to, I'm getting the word granted, indulgence. They overindulged with you many ways, overindulged to the point where they may have started getting a little bored. Sorry, but that's when I'm getting the word. I'm getting the word bored. And because of this, they became confused. So this actually doesn't come from you, Capricorn. This is this person creating their own scenario, own story, and screwing themselves up in it. They have confused themselves. That's what happened here. It seems as if your person of interest got into this situation, got into this connection, thinking that it might be something different. And now when it's turning into something else, it's blooming. For us, that's in love. That's that's what happens, right? It's like a flower. It blooms, right? But when it started blooming, this person started freaking out. They're like, oh my God, this thing's getting bigger. What do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know how to take care of this relationship. I don't know what to do. That's why this person started taking a step back. And it's because they didn't even trust themselves. It's because they knew that they did not have the experience that's needed to be in a relationship like this. They did not want to face those fears. They did not want to take that action. To take that that chance to get more clarity, to get more understanding. Why? Because it might be something that they didn't want to hear. And so what did they do? They just kind of took a step back. It's two things. For some of you, you may feel this person's a wimp for stepping out. For others of you, it actually might be a wise thing that this person did. It's the one wise thing that they've actually done. Not pursuing something just for the sake of pursuing it, but taking a decision and making that decision based on how they truly feel and how they think it might affect you too. So it was important for this person to stop and put those boundaries up when they did. Otherwise, they would have kept leading you on. I hope that makes sense, guys. It's for me, um, this was very intense. These cards, the energy that I'm getting and the the words that I'm getting, quite, quite interesting. But when I see the word bore, it's really bad because I see that they've taken somebody here for granted. Somebody here has been taken for granted. Somebody here has been used physically. They feel that they've been used physically. And because of that, it created boredom. That too much of anything is bad. So you have too much of candy or chocolate cake. And you get your fill. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm really done now. I'm done. I can't have any more, right? Unfortunately, that's what happened. But if you have a little bit at a time, You'll always be craving more, right? So it's always good to keep those healthy boundaries. Always keep those healthy boundaries because people respect you more. I'm not saying put up boundaries just completely, but a little bit of healthy boundaries. It's good. Here I have the Beginner's Tarot. And I'll be looking into... Any actions, any plans, any intentions? That your person of interest may have towards you. Any actions they may take? Excellent. You have the Eight of Pentacles, which I call my love workshop. Three of Pentacles. <sighs> Seven of Swords. Peekaboo. You got a peekaboo card. Nine of Swords. All right. There's a lot going on. And I don't see it being so good for you guys right now. Physically, yeah. Emotionally, I don't know what's going on. It doesn't seem like it's working out. Your person of interest is very um, selfish, egotistical, ego-oriented. I'm getting the word. You have a lot of pentacles here. Two of pentacles, eight of pentacles, three of pentacles. Then you have a king of pentacles. Then you have here 
Seven of Swords, and the Nine of Swords. You also have the Queen of Wands. Your person of interest, Two of Pentacles, they are juggling many things all at once. Priorities, opportunities, jobs, anything. But whatever it is, they're trying to juggle certain things in a certain amount of period of time. And one of the issues here is that they actually now officially feel overwhelmed and burdened by responsibilities. Too much. Too much for them to handle. We also have here the Eight of Pentacles. With the Eight of Pentacles, it does talk about how in this connection, there is this understanding that things are going to take time, but this person now is trying to make a plan. They know that things turned out really bad. It became sour. Something that was sweet once now is quite sour. And they want to sweeten it up again. So here with the Eight of Pentacles, they're creating a plan, creating a strategy. They, this also means that they're going to be taking a step back and there will be a lack of communication for a while but simply because they're trying to see what they can do to make the situation better. Here we also have the Three of Pentacles. Some of you might have been working with this person in the past. It could be current, if that is the case. Um, if you know this person through someone else, it does mean that they are um, falling in love with you, but it's not so strong right now. They do have, they have these feelings, but they don't know what those feelings are. It's almost as if this person's in a cocoon. I am seeing a cocoon. They're like sheltered by the rest of whatever it is, but they're sheltered from the world. And they have not experienced certain things in life. This is probably why you had the Innocence card too. They haven't really experienced these things, and so they don't know how to act or interact when certain things like this occur. Um, here we also have, if you do not work, or if you don't have the type of a relationship with this person in terms of knowing them through another association or another company or business, it simply means that they really want to manifest something with you. They want to construct this relationship with you. They want a partnership with you. And they want to manifest something wonderful in terms of friendship, partnership, love. Now, remember you had the wild woman card, right? Sneaky behavior, deceit, right? Now, you also have here the seven of swords. The seven of swords is a sneaky card, doing things that are not really supposed to be done, doing things behind someone's back and getting it done, but no one's supposed to know. It's a secret. So this is somebody who knows that they should not be pursuing this connection. It may not be allowed. It might not be permitted. And for a small portion of you, this could be an office romance because here we have that office type setting and here we have the sneaky behavior. Sneaky behavior in the office. Don't get caught. <laughs> okay. So there might be something that's going on for some of you. Um, this person is going to try to win you over. The problem, guys, is that I'm seeing here, it's a lot to do with money, materialistic. And remember, there was the physical, right? So we have a lot of the physical, a lot of the materialistic, but where's the spiritual? Where's the emotional? Right? That's a problem here. Because you have a lot of coins. Sure, settling down, being with somebody materialistically, it works for some. But also the fact that you had the sexuality card before, it talks a lot about simply focusing on the physical and not on the emotional. So here you have this individual also, and this is not a page. This is not even a knight. This is a king. Your person of interest their intentions may be really good towards you, but they have a different way of loving. So sometimes I say this, um, this thing, this sentence, they will love you the way that they know how to love, but they may not love you the way that you want to be loved. And that's a problem here. Your person of interest is somebody who's really settled, 
They really want to settle with you. They want to be with you. They want to offer you. This level of commitment, a tangible something. Um, let's move in together. Let's commit. Let's let's build this together or something like this. Let's, let's work on a project together. Whatever it is, it's something tangible. And they want it to be tangible and in real time. So they do want something with you. They're going to make an offer. But just understand here that you'll need to look at these signs and see if they're warning signs. You know, are they being sneaky? Is somebody here going to get caught? Hopefully nobody gets fired. Um, if it's not an office romance, it could be any third party situation. Three, we have here three of pentacles and we have the sneaky card. Third party, somebody might be here having an affair as well. Um, but the problem here is that, yes, they are very overwhelmed. They find you to be a very sweet and sexy, gorgeous distraction. My God, they can't take their eyes off you. Because they're so overwhelmed, they need to blow off some steam. And so then they find you, right? But that's not, that's not all of you. That's just a part of you. It's a very be beautiful part of you. But let's not focus on that. This person, unfortunately, they kind of are. However, this is the way that they are. For them, this is normal. So just, just understand that this is normal for them. And for them, materialistic stuff, physical stuff is very important because for them, that's real. That's what makes their life real and makes them happy in their day. Um, that's what makes them thrive. Here, we also have a part of them that doesn't understand what they're doing wrong. The Nine of Swords, they do feel guilty. And they do feel upset. They have here sleepless nights, psychic disturbances, fear, anxiety, even depression. Feeling and thinking, my God, what have I done? How could I have done this to my Capricorn? Putting you in a very difficult type of situation where things are not comfortable for you anymore. Here we also have the overall arching th theme, Queen of Wands. This person finds you irresistible, very gorgeous. As usual, we know this already. What they also like about you is that they find this intuitive part of you where you really get them, you really understand them. And they feel as if you, you both have this type of connection. However, I see more of the spiritual side coming from you, less from them. But they recognize this. And of course, they feel extremely pulled towards you in terms of this chemistry that the both of you have. It's a lot. It's very intense. Your person here is going to try to reach out to you, even if it's not allowed. So just be mindful. Be a little careful. I'm trying to say, don't get caught. But then that also means I'm telling you to go ahead and do it. <laughs> Do what you think is for the greater good, okay, for, of yourself and for the ones around you that love you. Just going to do a quick prayer. All right. These are messages from Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel.
Okay. <clears throat> Some of you might know I am not feeling well still. So sorry about my voice, the way it sounds. Hopefully I'll get better soon. One day, that day will come. <laughs> All right. We have here, don't stop. Don't stop giving and receiving love. Even though it may be very discouraging right now, the angels are saying, and it's the first card, first card's the strongest. Don't stop giving and receiving love. Keep that positive energy flowing. Not the right time. Right now is not the right time for things to move forward in this connection. Things need to evolve. They need to change. We also have here ask for help from others. There are boundaries. And in the meantime, focus on other things. Focus on yourself. Focus on hobbies. Things that you never really had a chance to do. Finish that stuff up. Ask for help from others. This could be your friends, your family, could be a therapist. It could even be somebody online. What type of help? Anything that is bothering you in this connection. Certain topics, behavioral issues, communication issues. There's so many things. Sometimes we could just talk to somebody and we get a totally different perspective and we understand something better because somebody else has already been through it. Here you do have the choice card. It's up to you. So some of you actually might decide that you don't want to be with this person anymore because it is very toxic in a way that there's a lot of lust. There's a lot of materialism. There's a lot of physical and it just stays at that. It does not go beyond that. And that's starting to get some of you very frustrated. If that is your case, Still, it's important for you to get that support and ask for help from others. Right now is not the right time to take those drastic measures. There is going to be a sense of forgiveness here. Somebody here may actually, this person may apologize. And it might even be you. You might apologize, say, sorry, but I can't move forward with this. And here we also have trust in the divine. Trusting in the divine. This will allow you to see as time goes by how things fall into place and it's for your greater good. Here we also have communicate clearly. When you do get the chance to talk to this person when you have that chance of forgiveness, do tell them three or four things, very short, very sweet, as I said, short and sweet. Don't go into details. But it is, it is important for you to get your point across. For those of you that want to be with this person, it's very similar. Right now, still, it's not the right time. You still will have to wait. It's still important that you ask for help from others and you get ideas, thoughts, experiences, learn the experiences from others. And we also have here trust. Trust in the divine. That whatever is written right now, this is the way it's supposed to be. Here we have forgiveness. It is important to forgive because if you don't, you have like a negative energy bubble orbiting around you and it's like a grudge. It just keeps orbiting wherever you go on planet Earth, even if you exit Earth, if you go somewhere else, it's always going to be with you. So it is easy to let that go by having compassion, feeling sorry for the person knowing in your mind that, you know what, this person just didn't know any better. It's just the way they are. It's just the way they were raised. It's just what they turned to as an adult. This is what their personality is like. This is what their character is like now. It's just who they are. So sometimes just having the compassion makes things easier to forgive. Many of you right now, I'm getting this sentence from so many if this person was to leave my life and I was not to supposed to be with them, why did they come into my life in the first place? Why did they cause this much heartache and pain? 
I'm getting this from a lot of you right now, especially with these cards, because it's talking about it's not the right time, it talks about weight, talk about trust. Well, one of the things that I've seen in many of my readings and in life itself, um, when somebody sometimes is not for you, if they're not actually made for you and they don't resonate with you on the same frequency, the celestial beings, angels, God, the divine, they know that you deserve better. And so people, sometimes if you catch somebody doing something, if you caught somebody cheating, that's a warning sign. Yes, it is sad, it's devastating, but these are signs, indicators that, you know what, beep, 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 it's not the right person for you. Warning, warning. What are you to do? Some of you may forgive, some of you may decide to move on. But typically what I've seen is that if you do wait, whatever the path follows from there, everything will fall into place. And if this person is meant to be with you, yes, they will be with you. But sometimes you deserve better. And that's why the celestial beings, God, angels, take that person away from you because sometimes this happens. They will find somebody where they will get a taste of their own medicine. It's very common. Sometimes we see couples and it's like, wow, those two deserve each other. <laughs> it happens. So sometimes there are these people that are with each other and they do compliment each other, but you might have not the, been the best person for that person because you deserve someone better. Especially Capricorn in this reading that I've seen, there was a lot of lust. There was a lot of passion, a lot of desire, a lot of materialism. That's not something that you're really looking for. And that's why some of you here are going to make that choice to want to move on. Because from your point of view, you've just had enough. Enough is enough. No more sneaky behavior. And the worst thing is, is when, when we're in situations like this, down the road when you meet somebody new, we all grow suspicious right? Once bitten, twice as shy. But don't let that first experience ruin the other one. Your new person is somebody brand new, completely different, different background. Everything is different, right? Their childhood was different. So just make sure that when you do get out of this type of a situation, for those of you that want to move on, don't judge the other person like that, because it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of pain and a lot of hurt that trust, right? The trust is no longer there. I know it's hard to trust somebody else after something like this, but learn from the lessons. Learn that, okay, I can keep my healthy boundaries. I'm not going to let this person overindulge to the point where they get bored. I'm not going to let them spend so much money on me that it seems as if they're just buying me, right? There's sm small little things like that, right? We have to learn from these little lessons and apply them in our lives. For those of you that want to be with this person, it's going to be, I'm getting the word game changer. <laughs> it's going to be a game changer. They are going to change, but it's going to take time. It's going to take some time for them to actually realize what it is to have someone like you. Um, and once it happens, it'll be very intense. It'll be a very intense connection. However, like I said, for all, for both groups here, be kind of careful because you did get two cards that were talking about being sneaky. Um, you don't want to do something where it's going to hurt, you know, yourself or a loved one and stuff like that. Like just think about it twice before you get into a situation like that. Capricorn, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity, some guidance in your situation. Do let me know in the comments below. For those of you who are new, please do have a look at my other channel, which is Asnoichia Audio. That is on YouTube. That's my other channel. And the videos there are absolutely free. Those videos are informational videos. And um, some of them are on relationships and advice. The other ones I have, they are on, uh, they're, they're regarding uh, spiritual connections. So past life spiritual connections, twin flames, soulmates, karmic partners, that sort of thing. 
And the most recent one I put up was on negative energies. What and who are negative energies? Jinns, demons, evil spirits. So have a look at those if you feel um, you may need to learn more. You might want to learn more. Um, like I said, it's all free. So please do have a look and do like, share, and subscribe to that channel. All right. You all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys again. Bye now.